This session will cover how Content Manager 10 can support collaboration capabilities. In addition, we'll look at various methods of organizing documents for ease of access as well. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll start by looking at the Content Manager user interface. It's been redesigned for version 10 to include an explorer type view in the left hand frame. And this is where I can point out some areas where it's, there are objects that are dedicated specifically to speeding access to documents. If we go into the trays object and look at our workers work tray, this is an, an available space unique to each user that allows you to place documents you're gonna be frequently accessing so that you can refer to them quickly without an awful lot of browsing or searching. You just navigate to the work tray, your documents are there. In addition to that, we also support an object type called user labels. And the best way to think of this is it's your own personal classification capability. You see that while I'm drilling down into it like uh, some sort of a, uh, an object structure, it really are just uh, labels that you can assign to your documents uh, that are specific to yourself. So as we see, I've got items assigned to these various labels here relating to my role as a pre-sales engineer. Now, in addition to those to speed access, we also have more traditional and more formal ways to file documents. We can either file documents uh, in the traditional file plan used by corporations for organizing documents by category and folder, or we can make use of client matter filing systems where it's organized along the legal lines of a client and a matter. The main difference between the, uh, the quick ways of doing this and the more formal ways of organizing documents is in the formal methods, we can also assign uh, access rights, we can also assign retention schedules to documents. But for the sort of collaboration work we're gonna focus on today, it's usually the workspaces or the labels that are going to be used. Now we also have another object called to-do items that uh, can be used to help us organize our documents. And this is a way to allow us to assign specific uh, actions to be performed. And with Content Manager, we get a lot of email notifications available. So I did receive a notification for this to-do item. Uh, the items themselves can either be just simple objects with a description of what there is to do, or if you wish, you can also attach a reference to a document there. So maybe you want to set up a to-do to create a certain type of document, and you want to assign that, that document as an FYI. So the placeholder is then stored inside of Content Manager. Now, we're looking at a placeholder, although this placeholder is a little bit different. I didn't manually create this. This is a placeholder associated with the SharePoint integration that's available with Content Manager. So the way that that integration works is as we register documents from within inside SharePoint, a placeholder is created in Content Manager. Later on, if we decide to retire those documents from the SharePoint site, the documents can then be stored in Content Manager and then they would, have, they would be associated with those documents. And in fact, that's what we're gonna do in the next use case to highlight what we can do with the SharePoint Content Manager integration. So I'm gonna take you to a sample SharePoint site. And this is a site that represents uh, a library where my hypothetical pre-sales team can create documents and we can work collaboratively on documents uh, so that we can pool our knowledge and be able to contribute to the creation of documents. This top document, the POC for Reversa Corp, is the proof of concept that I'm working on, and you'll see, as I mentioned, as part of the integration, when I registered this document through the integration management process, it was assigned a record number automatically. And the document itself remains in SharePoint, remains editable until 
uh, we either do something with that document ourselves or we allow content managers lifecycle management processes to process these documents. Now what I'm going to do is I want to put this document uh, into content manager. I actually want to relocate it so that I can begin uh, leveraging content manager as the central repository for these formal documents and I'm actually going to use that to facilitate another example of how we can collaborate and share documents in conjunction with content manager. So I'm going to go ahead and run the relocate action which will then take this document, it will remove it from SharePoint and it will file it with its associated uh, reference metadata in the content manager repository. So let's go ahead and just put that aside now. And if we go ahead and go back to our home, and I'm going to work through my trays now. So I'm going to go back to my, my work tray. And when this document is relocated, what we'll see is that the icon associated with the document will change from a content management icon to uh, an electronic document icon. It's a Word document, so we'll get a docx icon associated with it. And there it is. And I can validate that this is indeed in the system. I can now view it. I can do anything with this document that I'm permitted to in Content Manager. So with that said, what I would like to do next is I would like to take this completed proof of concept scope document and I want to to check it out to Microsoft OneDrive, which is a new capability in Content Manager version 10, so that we can then share it with other people both within and outside of the organization. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the right side. You'll notice I've got a check in, check out, and a check out to OneDrive action. I'm going to go ahead and start the checkout process. So when the checkout process is complete, uh, I have my status updated. You'll notice now that if I hover over these items, all I have is the checking capability now because the document is checked out. If I go to OneDrive, in the designated folder that I created for checkouts, uh, I've got a document there that I could use. If I wanted to edit that document, I could edit the document from here. Uh, I also wanted to point out that, as I mentioned, the access permissions are all handled through OneDrive as well. So if I specify, in this case, Ken Lay at Reverse Corp is my contact for reviewing this POC. If I want Ken to have access, I would use one of these links to provide access. If I have someone in my own uh, OneDrive domain, I can grant access down below and they would get, be able to get an email message sent to them. So the document stays checked out until all the edits are done, all the collaboration is finished, then I can go ahead and facilitate the check-in of this document again. If I click check-in, uh, I tell it that it's coming in from OneDrive, I want to make a new revision. I'll say something like edits, edits done and we'll go ahead and invoke the check-in process. So once the check-in process is completed, if I go ahead and just reselect to refresh this, what you see is that we're back to the state where we could check documents out again, and if I look at the document properties, you notice I now have two revisions of the document. I had my original revision, and I had the second revision that was checked in. So if we go to the revisions tab, we're looking at revision two. If I check on revision one, I've got revision one. So what I'd like to talk about next is, is when these documents are done, technically in this environment, the documents are sent through a workflow. And we're actually going to be using three documents that are in the workflow. This proof of concept document that I edited, uh, a software evaluation agreement, and then a POC request form that's filled out. So the workflow tool allows for document routing across multiple steps. 
there's also decision-making capabilities available. So what I would like to do now is I'd like to switch over and show the workflow from the perspective of a document approver who's not myself. So that would be a user known as Jeff Norris. So I've gone ahead and switched over to the machine where I have Jeff logged in. Uh, in his inbox, again, extensive notifications available in Content Manager. So I have a review workflow. If I look at this, uh, it's available. So we'll go ahead and get into Jeff's Content Manager environment. And it takes us right into his a workflow inbox, so he's got the activity here to perform a review. If we open it up, we can then open the documents up, and we can then go ahead and review these documents if we want, so they're available for viewing purposes. And if this was a true review, there'd probably be a little more work that goes on in addition to it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to signify that I accept that everything's in place to perform the workflow. The documents are there. They all look appropriate. So I'm going to check off uh, the results. I'm going to say that I want to approve this. I'm going to go ahead and add some notes. So we've got our, our document approved. And we can then finish this step. So at this point, the workflow is done. Of course, there, are, there may be other steps involved in this. If I go back to my machine, uh, we may see that there are some additional activities available. I'm just going to open up my inbox, and let's see what we got there. So we do have... We do have uh, various notifications here for the workflow process. But uh, if there's nothing new coming in for me, then I won't have any additional work to do. And what I'd like to do now is talk about uh, a tool, email, that's used a lot for collaboration. It's just not considered a collaboration tool in every sense of the word. But we do have the ability to leverage it with Content Manager, and it gives me a chance to talk about the integration. So I've got some documents here ready for me to work on. I have uh, this document, which is, this was actually the document that I received my sample uh, other accompanying documents with. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna save this email, and the way that we do that in the integration with Outlook is all I need to do is drag and drop this document, this email message, into a what we call a mapped folder. And it goes ahead and processes the documents at the bottom. And then if I want to uh, begin looking at some of the other email messages I have here, I have uh, a message from my manager asking me where things stand, and he wants a copy of the document. So what I can do is I'll go ahead and reply to Matt. And what I'm going to do is I'm not going to actually attach a copy of the document because that would be defeating the purpose of putting documents into Content Manager. What I'm going to do instead is I'm going to attach a link to the document. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my records work tray here is the POC document that I had edited. And I'm going to make sure I have the attached electronic records manager link in place. And instead of sending a copy of the document and proliferating documents and maybe violating uh, some level of security, I now have a link, which means that any user who receives this link uh, has to be someone who can be authenticated in Content Manager and have appropriate access rights to the document. So it allows me to do collaboration without propagating copies of documents. Everyone goes to Content Manager uh, with their link, and they can work on the documents there. So I'll go ahead and send that out. 
So what I want to do now is I just want to be able to uh, recap what it is that we've done here in the demonstration. So I've shown various methods of collaboration, be it SharePoint, be it OneDrive, be it email, that can be used with Content Manager to leverage documents to provide the appropriate document to the appropriate people at the right time to work on. And I also showed that there are ways to easily organize the content in Content Manager so you can quickly get at it without having to do a lot of navigation and a lot of searching. So this will conclude this demonstration session.